now we're going to get to the fun part of the of the bottle, which I'm looking forward to actually. So um, so the bottle this time, I think we're also going to stick with using um, the charcoal dust initially, and then we'll go into it with the with the darker areas. Okay, so I think that'll be the best the best way to go about it. Um, okay, let me just get my reference quickly. Right. Okay, so <clears throat> this is where it, it's very important to f to follow your. Um, I'm just making sure everything's on there. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's very important here to follow those shadows and light areas that you see because remember, it is basically looking through the glass at the coconut, etc. So you want all of those white shadows and obviously those reflections in the background. So especially where you see. That area over there, that's actually the coconut behind the jar. Okay, so you want to keep that in mind when you're working with that. But all of these transitions are actually very soft. So none of them are very hard. There's no real hard lines. The only hard line really is, is sort of like that line over there that will be relatively hard. Okay, so um, we're going to be using the, the um, uh, sorry, the charcoal dust a bit. Um, but there are quite dark areas in here where it's not going to be able to make it dark enough. And then that's where we're going to be using the willow charcoal and our blending stump. Or you can also use the um, cotton bud as well. Okay, the earbuds. All right, so like especially at this top section over here, then we'll probably use that instead of the, the brush. So just the brush will be for the softer, lighter areas and for instance, that little area over there. Okay, so I think let's start from the top and work our way down because then we don't have to keep on putting paper down to do anything. Right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my drawing back here. Um, I might just need to lean here. Right, so I'm just going to get my shape back there again quickly that I lost when I did that background. And another thing as well, remember you can change your background slightly if you want to, okay? So if you decide you want to bring some textures or something into the background, um, you can do that. So for instance, now where those two join, I can see I haven't actually gone close enough there. So I'm actually just going to quickly go over that slightly. Um, and just to go over. very softly just to get that edge there but I'm hardly even touching the paper because I want to keep that dark you've got to be very careful you don't make halos as well halos is basically when you go around a, an edge and it's it's slightly different from the existing area that's what we call a halo okay so I'm just gonna just get my you want to use your hard eraser for this you can as well just want to make sure the shape is correct that's the biggest thing you don't want this uh, funny little round piece to be skew at all okay so at the top there I'm also going to do the same so that can be a bit trickier So I brought it over there so I can actually use my razor now. So I've actually brought that area down, the gray, because it actually is um, a repeat basically. If you look at the reference quickly here, you'll see the um, it is the same color obviously as a background. Okay, so I've brought it down and then I will basically erase that white area into there. So you can use a hard eraser, you can use a pencil eraser, or you can just... Yeah, that will probably, yeah, the hard eraser or the pencil eraser will actually do the trick. 
just to bring that top area in there like that okay and now I'm going to start using the willow charcoal I'll just get a piece of paper here and then I'm going to actually lean my picture on here my reference so but also help sometimes if you have um, a plastic sheet like that, it can also work quite well because it doesn't smudge too much. So I try and keep my reference, especially with something small like this, I try and keep my reference quite close to the picture that I'm working on. Okay. Sorry, I'm keeping bumping this thing. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in the darker areas. So now I'm going to just bring in the dark areas, keep the lighter areas, and I'm going to try and follow it as accurately as possible. Get that shape right. So if you have sketched out the shape, you obviously just follow that. I just left mine out. And I'm just going to bring in the darker areas. If my head gets in the way, just let me know. Okay, actually I'm going to move this down slightly. Okay. You guys can still see okay there? Yes, thanks, okay. yeah. I'm going to bring in that little dark piece at the top there. What's nice is you can bring the darks now and then you don't actually always have to bring the light areas um, or the, the gray areas because you can use what's going to be on your paintbrush in, to be able to do that. So you'll see what I mean when I start working there. And whatever is very white, try and keep that white white, okay? Because it'll just help a lot um, that if you don't want to have to <clears throat> erase it. So here, if you prefer and you find that this, this particular um, paintbrush is a little bit too big, then you can use a smaller one. Just for the small details. Grab a smaller one. Can't be too small. So like something like that would be probably a little bit too small. But you want one that's got a bit of a point. Or just a smaller sort of area. That could be quite a nice one. <laughs> Sorry, put dogs. Got such a fright there. Okay, so here I've got a, a slightly smaller paintbrush that I'm working with, so I've got a bit more control. And you can see now I don't have to worry so much about that big pointy thing. Here I can actually control it a lot better. And remember just to keep on blowing every now and again. And this is where this little eraser pencil comes in very handy. But you can actually really do these little finicky things. So this is a little bit finicky. But it is doable. And then for these areas over here, the dark areas that I want to try and keep dark, I'm going to try and use a blending stump for that, just to try and smooth it out a bit. You can try and use your paintbrush. Depends on what paintbrush you have as well. It also that also makes a difference with regards to how much you can blend. Just remember to try and keep your shape quite accurate.
So this is going to be quite time consuming. But rather finish the top section. Don't move down any further down until you've done that top piece because you don't want to really have to go back into that afterwards. So sort of try and finish it off as accurately as possible if you can. I can't remember how many of you guys did the um, that bottle that last time. Marissa, I know you did it. And Brenda, you also did it, eh? Hey? Yeah. You can take your blending stump and you can rub your blending stump on your willow charcoal and then actually draw it in like that. So just to bring in those smaller little areas, so literally like that. Okay, so you can just look up quickly. Um, yeah, so just for these little sections over here, so they're a little bit, a little bit subtler, they're not such a big thing, all right? Um, and then like these sections over there, just go in, into your water charcoal with the blending and stuff itself, all right, like that. And then you can actually literally draw it in like that. Because if you're going to try and do that with your willow charcoal, you're not going to have a hope to be able to do it properly, okay. So there you can literally draw in those slightly grayer areas and it'll make your life a lot easier. Okay. You can test it on a piece of paper, make sure it's not too dark. And then go in. If you want to bring in those funny little shapes there. What's nice about this is you can keep it nice and smooth. You can blend it in quite nicely with the rest of your picture there. Try to keep the whites as white as possible. So remember when you do work with the, um, the paintbrush and the charcoal, dust. Remember the whites are a lot easier to erase. Okay. It's only when you press it in that you're not going to be able to erase with the nicely. You're not going to be able to get your whites back. Also my paper is, is a lot, is quite easy as well. It's quite a nice paper to work with. So the rest of this I'm going to do the same way. I'm going to use my blending stump to actually bring in these areas. Okay, so this whole little lip of the jug I'm going to do with a blending stump, bring in all those different greys like that. Just by rubbing the blending stump on my charcoal and then sketching them in. This is a much easier way than trying to do the opposite, which is now putting the color down and then erasing it with a small eraser. This is a much, much easier way to do it than this.
So what I wanted to say is if you look at the texture in this background, okay, so we've got more of the stripy texture. Um, if you want to change it slightly, it might be a little bit easier for you to get it to blend in more with the picture itself. What you can do is you can take your cloth and you can just dab like this. So just check here, guys. Then you won't have to worry too much about the stripiness continuing throughout the picture. All right. So this is an option if you want to rather go with almost like the texture it actually has there which is almost like a dabbing on top of there. Okay. And then at least you'll be able to get more of a consistent um, sort of texture between the background and where it meets up with your, your object because you won't have to worry about getting those stripes. Okay, so you can do that. And then you've got more of that sort of texture there. Now you can actually go into here again and then clean up again without worrying too much about that. Okay, you can dab it in here as well. So I'm dabbing it into the charcoal dust. Because right, that's actually the tricky part is to get this transition here to be the same because I don't want this halo. So I'm going to go back into it again. So that's just me being finicky but I do want it to stay the same. So there we go. You can see now that's actually worked much better. Now it's sort of more consistent with the rest of the background. And I don't have a halo. So I can go back into that now and just bring in my highlight again. And now that edge looks much better. But one doesn't have to do it so smooth as I'm doing it, you know what I mean? So obviously if you have more of a textured paper, it won't be so smooth. But as long as you've got the idea, if you, you know, if you've got the tonalities right, it doesn't have to be smooth. Um, it can be sketchy. So it's, it's, that's not too much of an issue. Yeah, see, this big, these bigger sections are much nicer to do because they're actually quite easy. You can actually sketch them in quite nicely with the, with the blending stump. This is where the blending stump comes into its own when it comes to things like this, you know. You can really get quite a nice smoothish texture with it. You can control it quite well as well. Okay, so the background over here is actually that woody texture, but it is very vague. Um, it is that sort of board that was continuing on in the background. Um, so I would actually put this in. So if you guys are going to be working on this section here, so you can just look up quickly. Um, if you're going to be working on this section over here, I would do the table part in the background first. Look, it is a blurred table. It's not, it's, it hasn't got the same texture as the other part of the table, but I would bring that in first before you do your little jug handle. Okay. I'm just using the paintbrush to blur it. So I'm going to keep the brush marks still uh, within that the same uh, direction as the table goes there, just so that I am showing a slightly different surface. It's not the same as the background. just to go over the handle slightly just so that when you draw the handle in you can just erase that area of it so that it's a nice sharp edge. You want that handle to pop out quite nicely. I think I prefer this dabby texture over here behind the bottle um, instead of the stripes. 
I think it actually gives a nicer feel and it's a lot easier to do too. So the handle there, those darker parts, I'm actually putting willow charcoal on the paper and then I'm just going to blend it with a blending stump just to get it nice and dark. So this section now, so you can just check up there quickly. So we have gone into the dark section of the bottle. I'm actually going to be putting down the willow charcoal as it is, nice and thick. And then I'm going to go over this with a blending stump and blend it.
Okay, guys, you see here, just with the background part that I'm doing of this, um, you know, I'm just basically continue on with the wood, just keeping the same sort of direction. Um, just be careful if you do, when you do the direction of that wood over there. Okay, so I just wanted to show you quickly. So just look up quickly. Just make sure that the, the, the direction of the lines is the same direction over here, because remember, it's the same piece of wood. Okay, so, you know, if you're going to keep... Keep the lines, you know, relatively, just sort of check to make sure that they look like they gel, that it's the same piece of wood. So like my lines, because I wasn't looking at the other wood, was slightly the wrong direction. Look, this is quite um, blurred, so it's not, it's not too fussy, but still, I would um, just make sure that if you are showing lines, you know, when you're doing the blending, that it does um, show up as accurately, okay? That it's not this, it doesn't change direction suddenly because it is going to look a bit strange. But here, where the shadow is, here, there's this like light shadow. You can see there's almost lines going in the opposite direction as well. So, almost like a bit of a cross hatching thing. And I'm going to bring that in because it does add a bit of interest to that corner there. Okay, so I'm going to actually rub this charcoal into my paper and then I'm going to go over with the charcoal again. So this part I only did with, um, I've just remembered this section over here, I didn't actually blend with a blending stump, I actually did it with a paintbrush. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over with a blending stump now, because what it does is it pushes the, the charcoal into the paper. And now if I go over with the dark, it should give me a much smoother transition. There you are, much better. There we go. Okay, so those are the little tricks one has to use to get your charcoal to do what it what you want it to do.
Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm looking at this now, I can see, for instance, if I'm looking at this whole picture, um, for me, this is a little bit too textured on the right hand side over here. So I do like the texture, but it's a little bit too much the same. Um, so I would actually go back into that and, you know, I would give this more of a tonality. So take some of the white away here. So what I would do there, like I'm just going to show you quickly now, is just go back into it using the same textured feeling, not just rubbing into it. Um, and then just sort of adding a little bit more dark to it, just to make it so that it's a little bit darker. So even that has made a big difference already. Just that little bit of tonality difference, okay? Because it is in shadow that side, and it's not extremely obvious in the picture. It's only obvious if you squint. So if you squint and look at your reference, because if you look at it closely, it all looks relatively the same except for the white section there. But if you actually squint, you can see it's actually got quite a, a fair amount of transition if you're not looking at the black areas, okay. So there you're going to definitely need to bring in a little bit more tonality there, just so that it now looks more round. To me, it didn't look round just now. And I mean, you can fiddle with that as well. You can also add a bit more um, texture to it if you want to. And then like these sections underneath here where it actually joins up is actually very black. So I'm just going to go into that quickly while I'm thinking about it. Just go into that where that shadow joins up. So some of those sections I might have to spray and go back in if I wanted any blacker than that because I'm really not going to get it much blacker than that. I don't want to go into that with the charcoal pencil at all because a lot of the, these textures are very smooth here so there aren't really any really hectic um, sort of textures that aren't smooth except for the except for the, the coconut, you know. So the coconut is the only part where I actually went in with the charcoal pencil. So you just got to be very careful with that charcoal pencil. I can see the smudge slightly okay. over here. So I just want to go into that quickly. So as you see my table sort of disappeared a little bit there. And as I said, that the background there, if you want to get rid of the stripes, you don't want the stripiness, um, then you can just go and you can just dab and give it a slightly different texture. Okay. Yeah, you can just dab slightly with the cloth if you want to get more of that sort of texture, you know, but or you can combine the two. I mean, you can have a few dabs and then whatever, but it's up to you. Okay. I do quite like the stripiness, but it didn't really work so much in the background.